Good to see you, Hunter. We are playing the Hunter Classic, and today I am finally making a video to explain long-range shooting in detail. A lot of people ask me, how is it possible to shoot animals way beyond the rendering distance? In this video, I will show you how this is done. Follow me as I try to make it on the current long-range leaderboard with a shot on Red Deer in Val de Bois. The trick is simple. Imagine yourself in a cylinder. The horizontal distance up to which you can see animals in this game is 220 meters. This is the so-called rendering range and is a fixed value. Now, if you can manage to increase the height difference between you and the animal, you can increase the actual shot distance. That's all there is to it. And this is why you need to shoot down from a high place. To demonstrate this in the game, I selected the Red Deer in Val de Bois. The longest shots in this reserve used to be down here in the southeast, people shooting from the mountain down to the river. The max shot distance here is about 357 meters. In Season 19, I established a new long-range location in the center of the map, and I entered two animals in the Hall of Fame. In this location, animals can be seen up to 365 meters. In the meantime, others are using the same location for their shots. The current season best for Red Deer is 360 meters, and this is our target to beat today. So let's get the weapon ready. I'm going to use the 4570 because I can mount the 12 times uh, scope on it. That's going to be the easiest to shoot from this long distance. And we have to start with finding a red deer. It has to be a stack, otherwise it wouldn't count for the leaderboard. Ideally it'll come alone because we have to drag it all the way through the woods up here. And to show you this on the map, around here we should find the stack and we have to keep calling it up until it reaches the area where you see the tree stand. This is the shooting area where the uh, red deer will have to be when we shoot it from the mountain. Oftentimes red deer will call here first, so it's not too hard to find one. Uh, let's see how this goes. The red deer caller is not only a lure, it's also a uh, location caller. And here you could have red deer, red fox, roe deer around. So I'll just keep calling, hopefully get a response. So we've got red deer down by the river. And I've been calling. I've been using the caller as a location caller. So now I need to know if there's a stack in the group and we can start the whole procedure. I'm going to use the scent spray quite a bit because that just lasts longer than the call itself. Because what needs to be done here really is you have to see where it is. You have to keep a quite a big a distance, 100 meters away maybe. You have to keep moving, but you still want to know whether it's still coming. So sometimes it's easier to, to spray a location and then move away and see if it's coming. So right now here I've been just using the caller. And once they start coming... I can't stay here or I will spook them. Just want to make it over the hill here. Oh boy, I don't remember the path really through this. There's some locations where it's easier. It's been a long time since I've been doing this. Yeah, let's start here. So 
some kind of hiding up here. I see the hind. I also brought the bow because sometimes you have to take out disturbing animals. For example, a roe deer will be up there too. I'm inclined to leave the hind behind. There's a stack. Excellent. Now let's mark the place. And the whole luring will start now. Of course, it's risky to shoot these animals if it's a bad shot and she runs. Then the stag is gone. So now there will be a lot of backwards walking. Is he still there? Is he still coming? And for that, you need those long open areas. And if I remember correctly, I have to move down towards the um, the little lake there. Going to apply sand spray just in case. So once you are sure that the deer is there, you have to move quite a bit away and then call again and keep crouching. And during that time, sometimes they just trot off. The stack is still there. So now I have to find an open spot. So it's kind of a timing thing. When you call before you lose them, if it's too early, they, they uh, catch up with you, see you and run. Next brain location will be here. Yes, and then I can, uh, I can see them from over there. So the deer slowly pile up at the Spray location, I'm waiting for the stack. Ah, there he is, right near the tree. So we mark the location, so we have it on the hunter mate map. That's where they're at currently. And you can see on the hunter mate, I'm trying to keep a certain distance not too far, so I know they're there. Not too close, so they don't spook. If I remember correctly, the next place to call them is up here. I believe I will have a longer view again from here. So this whole uh, procedure can now take an hour sometimes until you have them where you need them. It can take more than an hour, actually. It really depends on how it goes. I will start calling again. And now where, I'm, where am I going to be? Can you guys please respond? I want to know if you're still there. They're totally overwhelmed by the scent, it seems. So right now I don't see them, but I remember this tree. From here I will have a long view again. Yes, I can be up there and observe them come in. There you go. 
That's the sound. Excellent. The spray reaches 150 meters. I think that's about right. It should reach for the stack, but I've also called, so it'll certainly come closer even without the scent. Call again. Use the spray. And then disappear. You can do it just with the collar. I could probably do it with the collar if it was just a stack, but with the hinds around, I think I have to keep a greater distance to them. So this is an open area here. And if they were pretty close already, they would see me and run. And the two hinds are coming in. I've really only seen two females. And it's pretty rough terrain. They're struggling to get there. Oh, there's three hinds. But show me the stack, please. So they have reached the tree. Before I continue, I want to see the stack. Oh, spotting says male. I'm spotting the stack somewhere. Not sure where. Must be behind the rock there. So the male is there. And I've got a safe distance up here. But um, don't you guys go too far. It did say male, so the stack is there. I didn't see it, but spot it. It's a miracle. So the first hind is coming. And I'm still not seeing the stack. But I will have to trust my spotting information. This can be quite nerve-wracking. And as already said, this can take quite a lot of time. Sometimes the animal just doesn't come, it gets stuck. So my stag is there, red deer male. And I, I want to see it get loose from that position and come up here, but then I have to be quick. This is weird. I keep seeing male here, right behind the rock. It should have come to the tree. And I'm thinking this might be a chance to get rid of some hinds by shooting them with the bow. too risky I'm gonna move on apply the sand spray again because here I have another long view I can see them come in but now I really have to move that's the uh, problem with the many animals if I only had one stag I could call and wait until I really see it come up now I have to move even though it I didn't see it come We've got a lot of tracks here. This could be cottontails. There's always burrows up here. And so many tracks. And this can be a problem. If, there are, if they are around, if they have to burrow somewhere in the way, they can run around and spook. They can spook my deer. Ah, oh, there's the burrow. Can you believe it? All right, so the two hinds have reached the uh, spraying location. Oh, yes, where are you? He 
He is still at the tree. He is still at the red dot. And behind me I hear a Hutton tail. <laughs> Not ideal so far. I have to keep calling and I might have to start shooting my bow. Trying to spot the rabbit. And by the way, I'm only seeing two hinds here. We had three. So I have quite a lot of cleaning up to do here. This cottontail is no longer a problem. I can't move too far away or I will lose the stack if it's stuck. So these guys really make me work here. Okay, I have to move around. I have to see the stack. Might have to call from a different angle. And everything without having, without being seen by the hinds. Oh, the stag has come. Excellent. Now let's move. Now we have to move to the tree stand. I have called, so he's coming up here. And one little stupid cottontail can break the whole party. And since I'm crouching, the rabbits will not flee. That's a bit of a problem. But it should be okay. We're past the burrow. We're past the tracks. Oops, getting stuck. So the area is really rough. Lots of rocks and stuff. And it's, and it's also steep. How are we doing back there? They haven't spooked yet, at least. Both standing in the very same location. This is where I have must have called. And I can see the antlers. Yes, the stag is coming. It seems we have lost a hind in the process, which of course is great. I keep marking the place so I have an idea where they are. You might have seen this. You can mark the place with the binos. Initially, that was only possible with the rangefinder. Alrighty, we are approaching the shooting area. And what I have there is a tree stand and a ground blind. The tree stand is so I can lure them past me. They will have to come inside the render range. Uh, yes, you keep coming. I call this shooting position, but it's actually the target position. I want this the deer in the target position. I'm going to fast travel up to the tent, move to the shooting position, and from there we have to beat those 360 meters. So I'm going to lure them up here and they have to come within those 360 
They have to be well within those uh, within this distance. This is important because when I'm fast traveling, what I see sometimes when fast tra traveling over the head of these animals, they start trotting around. They get confused somehow. Don't know what what exactly happens there. Uh, they don't sense me, and yet they trot around sometimes. But they will then again move to the lure. And this is a really difficult location. There's not a lot of area. It's a small area. I'm starting to use the sand spray here. I will also call them. And now these deer will have to come up here exactly to where it just sprayed. Once they are there, I will leave the tree stand, come to the ground blind, and then spray again so that they walk down to the ground blind. This all has to happen within render range. If I lose them once, I'll have to run far forward uh, to catch them again within render, run backwards, and all this is pretty difficult here. And now I'm going to change the options to show me where my stuff is. Like I said, it's been a while since I've been doing this. Now I'm looking for my tree stand. One of these trees has it. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Here it is. This is where I called before. And now the sand spray should kick in. So they're going to walk up here, up here. Maybe I could show it, show it like this. They should walk past this and end up up here. That's enough far away for me to sneak down, spray the location, and then fast travel up to the tent. Now, there's at least three animals. This could be really difficult. But of course, with the fast traveling, it's a lot easier nowadays. In the early days of long range shooting, we would walk to the top. We used the sand sprays, and once the animals started coming, we hurried up to the shooting location. And that is 250 meters away, at least in those older areas. That's a long way. The timing was, was everything. And nowadays you can just fast travel. That's a lot easier. Making sure the weapon is ready. Making sure I have camping supplies for the fast traveling it has happened to me that I have uh, done everything right and then I didn't have any camping supplies the only thing that can break this now is rain if rain comes in you cannot see the, the target area it'll be full of fog ah, three animals but the first one is a stack Check in the scent eliminator. Ooh, it's off already. I better apply it again. Yeah, they all make it up here. But it could be worse. There could be five hinds. There they are. Everything ready for the showdown? Ah, oh, three females. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't argue with me. So everybody move up there now. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Oh, this is risky. 
boy, boy, this is risky. But the sand spray is really uh, dulls the senses. So they're not as alert as usual. And I have to be fast before they start moving down here again. So the ground blind really is for me to know the distance. And if they start moving down, I'll have to disappear. So please let me make it. All right, send spray applied. I will call. And now, I'm going to fast travel up to the tent. You can see the white flag on the map. Once I reach the tent, I will run inside to make sure I still see them and then run up to the white flag. So let's see how this goes. Here we go. And they just called again. That means they are still within render. Where's my spotting scope? So... Somewhere here they'll have to be. So let's make it up there quickly. And then hope the stack is still visible. I've lost many and one stack here. And I might not go all the way. I just want to make sure I can shoot it. It doesn't have to be a record shot. The stack is still there. And by the way, I think, as if I remember correctly, no, I can shoot crouching. Oh, I hit it, but badly. Ah. So, <laughs> a lot of things just happened. I hit it, but I hit it badly. I hit it in the back. I want to quickly use the rangefinder because some explanations. So the animals will run away from you and at some point they leave the render range. You might have seen the uh, Heinz run. One was visible up to here. That means you could theoretically shoot animals up to here. I'm thinking I shot the stack at maybe 358 or so. Here it was. Rangefinder says 362. Usually I have to subtract a few meters. We'll have to see if it even dies. Another hind ran here, back here. You can see I might have shot it at 364 or so. Again, the longest distance here possible is 365. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go down and check if that red deer died because I had to do a hasty shot. And before I do this, I'll show you the tent position. One of the challenges with these long range setups is placing the tent on the mountain. <laughs> and I want to show you this. Maybe there is better places. A lot of other people are using this place as well. Maybe you've got a better spot. This is the one I found. I was able to uh, stick this tent on this hump here. Uh, any further way will be difficult. The further way the tent is, you might lose the animals. They might be out of render and then you cannot see them anymore. Even if you run closer, you have to run a lot closer until they come within render again. So I'll go down and wish me luck. Hopefully I've hit the red deer. Somewhere here I can tumble. <laughs> and we have arrived and what's really funny, the faster you fall, the heavier you breathe. <laughs> and now I don't breathe anymore. Here we are. What you can do is if you miss the animal, you can lure it back of course. But you can only fast travel every 30 minutes, real time. So you have to lure it back, you have to wait a long time. That's when the tree stand comes in handy again. You can wait there. 
All right, what have we hit? What have we hit? Intestines! Now, I've seen a bug recently where intestine shot did not lead to death of the animal. I hope this is not going to happen to me here. Because it used to be intestine shot would lead to death no matter what. And I've recently had animals survive intestine shots. Uh, I knew I hit the intestines. It was too far in the back. But once I had it, uh, once I had the weapon leveled where I wanted it to be, I just shot. I didn't go uh, attempt for the lungs after that. Or he might have um, left render range. And to be honest, I didn't quite remember where animals leave the render. 44%. My hopes are rising. And I'm not running. Because I might lure it back if it survives. Oh, we have a red deer. Oh, we have a dead deer. It's died. It's died. I'm really happy right now because then I can really fully demonstrate the whole shebang here in one go. The red deer is down. I did it somehow. I'm really happy. And let's remember 360. 3.0 uh, is to be beaten to get to the top of the leaderboard. 359.4. I didn't make it. Oh well. It's gonna be the second on the leaderboard. I'm not gonna do another attempt because of uh, the lot of work it really is. But hey, it worked. I was able, after a long time doing this, I was able to lure the deer up here. We had four deer in the target area. What a mess. And yet I was able to shoot this one. Happy it worked out really. So I can finally show you how this works. I hope you picked up a, a few tricks, like the tricks with the tree stand and ground blinds and sand sprays and whatnot. I hope you learned a little bit how this all works. If you ever have any doubts that there's cheating behind this, people cheat, they have longer distances. This is really all it is. And uh, if you show me a location where you don't understand how it's done, I can explain to you. I can show you maps. I can show you how it's done. Maybe not with a video. But if you have any questions around this, let me know, post the questions below the video, send me a message to my Hunter account, and uh, I'm happy to explain them all to you. I'm really glad this worked out. You might hear this. Um, I'm a bit excited that this worked out so quickly. I hope you liked the video. Leave a comment, leave a like below. Thank you very much. Stay in touch.